This program deals with devil worship and satanic beliefs. It contains explicit scenes and descriptions of violent crimes and rituals. Because of the program's theme and controversial subject matter, parental discretion should be exercised. And welcome to the Villain Cult Podcast. We are the most horrible podcast on earth. And I am, of course, your host, weighing in at a calm, cool 300 pounds. I am the one man crime spree, the world champion of videos, and the man that's causing all of this, Roy Goddamn. And I am joined, as always, by my esteemed colleague. He is the Duke of Danzig, the Alpha Romeo, Eric. The ladies fight for his delight, Lawton. And, of course, you know him. He is not the hero you want, but he is the hero you need from the villain cult. He is Mike fucking Lockhart. How are you guys doing today, man? It was great. All right, I guys, got the end I of just... the world in my fucking pajamas, man. Well, I got to say, man, um, you know, we got to talk about the big news, the one thing that everybody is talking about, and that is the fact that there may be an unaltered cut of the movie Cats that may become available on Blu-ray. Um, have you heard about this, Lockhart? Uh, yeah, actually, uh, I was drunk yesterday and popping perks and watched it at my girlfriend's house. Um, not even CGI assholes are going to save this fucking movie, man. I'm... It is a... Um, it is fucking bizarre. Um, so what do you mean by so I'm not assholes? Well, okay, I don't know if you heard about this, but they've made this movie based on the horrible Broadway play Cats. And uh, Lockhart, Lockhart, you fill him in. What, what exactly is going on with this? Well, listen, I mean, I'm not an uncultured swine, and I like fucking musicals, but this is just so fucking bizarre from head to toe, man. <laughs> Part of it, it looks like a fucking fever dream from a cat lady. The other part looks like a fucking furry's masturbatory fucking film. I mean, it's just insane, man. I mean, if you want, turn the fucking movie off. Listen to the fucking music. But don't watch this. It's an assault on your fucking eyeballs. I refuse to watch this until I see it in 4K with assholes intact. But, uh, you know, without a doubt, the other big news. One time, but they removed them. Well, okay, so I guess the story on the street is is that they had to hire a CGI team whose sole purpose was to CGI out anything that looked like a butthole. I guess the deal is that these cat costumes did not actually have buttholes, but that they were made in a weird way that the pucker and stuff on females kind of looked like a butthole. So they had to hire a whole team of CGI guys to take out the buttholes. And that's the true story of where this cut of the film came. But if they were to just put out that version of the film, like I said, I will watch it when it is 4K with assholes intact. But um, I don't know if you guys have heard about this. There's a lot of scary things going on in the world right now. Um, a lot of people are acting crazy out there, but uh, the big news that everyone is talking about is the fact that the new Glenn Danzig film, Veronica, dropped this week uh, on the 17th. A lot of people got it earlier through uh, downloads and other uh, nefarious uh, sources, ways that they were able to get a hold of it, but um, 
I, like a good boy, I'm a big collector of Blu-rays and DVDs, and I actually ordered it from Amazon. And believe it or not, it did show up on the 17th. I know it did for you too, Eric, but uh, before but I get I in... Mine on the 18th, but mine did arrive in perfect condition. Uh, um, if mine was... Fucking atrocity, uh, perfect. Well, uh, Eric, you first, man. You have always been known as the Duke of Danzig. This had to be your defining moment when your hero, Glenn Danzig, put out uh, what has to be considered one of uh, horror's greatest films, uh, Veronica. Oh, what, what did, what did you, you think, think of it, man? Well, first of all, um, I've been following D Glenn Danzig, what, 30 years now, nearly. Um, his early discography is fucking solid, dude. His, I mean, the Misfits, Sam Hain, that early dancing shit, you, it can't be fucking compared with, dude. It's incomparable. It's brilliant. Um, but, for you know, it seems like for the, like the last 25 years or so, I've always had to defend Glenn Danzig. It, it, it's getting tedious, dude. I'm tired of it, man. Um, and I've gotten to the point where this piece of shit is just, it's indefensible. Um the movie has no fucking merit whatsoever in any way. It, it, it's fucking horrible. The, 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 the main villain is a, is a guy in a rubber suit that looks like a Power Rangers leftover villain from the 1990s. The, um, the dialogue is terrible. The lighting is terrible. The wigs are fucking terrible. Um, the actress is ridiculous in that first part, the one with the pink wig and the freaking duck lip sticking out like, four inches. She looked like fucking Dappy Duck. Um, I, I just, everything about this movie was fucking off. There was no likable characters. There was no, like every story has a plot. You know, every, Man, every are you guys going to be story shocked? Has conflict. There's no fucking conflict in this. There's just unlikable characters. Oh, there's conflict. All right. What did you think of it, Lockhart? I think that Northside Kings guy should have knocked Danzig out again before Danzig made this fucking <laughs> Dude. Now that's shocking, man. I gotta say, but uh, there's definitely going to be conflict by the time this is all said and done. But Lockhart, what did you think of it, man? Oh man, well this thing's being compared to the Room, you know, as being like the worst horror movie ever made, man. But the Room's gonna have some redeeming qualities to it, dude. At that, that point, oh exactly, man. I'm telling you right now. Oh yeah, uh, fuck the Room compared to this movie is the Godfather Part Two. Um, Glenn Danzig should never be allowed to touch a fucking camera as long as he lives, man, or ever converse with another fucking stripper and say, hey, I'm going to put you in a movie. Now, I want you to tell me how you can put a fucking stripper, and I'm talking 25 to 30 of these bitches in one movie and have them dance and have it still be fucking boring and almost marry a tit with a fucking complete nipple to be seen. It's fucking ridiculous, man. Glenn Danzig's chick that he picked for that first fucking movie, Darjee, has the worst goddamn French accent I've ever heard in my entire fucking life. Man. And her entire body looks like a fucking 12-year-old got on a sex doll website and just fucking threw the bars over on everything that he fucking liked, man. It's, she looks like a fucking character of a fucking, you know, of a slut, dude. <laughs> She's not attractive in the least fucking desire. The fucking uh, nipple eyeball thing was just too fucking much. I mean, now listen, I knew I was in fucking trouble when that title sequence hit and it looked like it was from fucking 1996. I mean, it's just fucking horrible, man. The goddamn spider in the first thing looks like it's from a fucking 1994 PC video game. And fuck, don't even get me started on the fucking rubber-suited monster guy. Um, what's uh, what's this he says about the alleyway, Eric? I'm sure this has already made it oh. into his repertoire. Yeah, we, the best line of the whole movie is, come here back in this alley so I can butt fuck you, bitch. <laughs> well, <laughs> I'm, I'm like, shocked. And no. He, he just, like, breaks her neck or something. Oh, yeah. I, 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 listen. The next story is about this chick called the fucking Face Carver, which is the dumbest fucking name ever. And then the last the one, fucking, and then the last one's about some fucking countess that fucking likes you know bathing in blood. And dude, it's the worst thing I've ever fucking seen. Glenn Danzig is the king of the lingering shot with nothing going on. I'm talking 15 to 30 seconds of the camera being on someone and no fucking motion or emotion, which can't be found in this fucking movie anywhere. Well, it's just 
I am really shocked by both of you guys because I thought that this movie was awesome from beginning to end. Uh, the eyeball titties were brilliant. Glenn Danzig is one of the greatest directors of our time, and I, I was absolutely in love with it from beginning to end. And I can't suggest it enough. If you guys can find a way to download this film or order one from Amazon, I suggest that you do that as soon as possible. Don't listen to him. If you pay for this fucking movie, you'll just add him to the list of people you want to fucking murder. That's him, Herman, the funny-looking one with the mustache. I'll handle him. Hey, Whipple, you've been giving the missus a tough time for squeezing Charmin bathroom tissue. But we don't squeeze you, Charmin, in the store. Yeah, see, there's a sign. A sign. Honey, there's a sign. But, Herman, we can't resist. Charmin's so deep down, squeezably soft. And the soft fragrance is irresistible. Irresistible price, too. Honey, the sign. Everyone squeezes new Charmin here. Does smell nice, eh? <laughs> Feel soft. But you gotta resist it, honey. You gotta be strong like us guys. <sighs> right, Whipple? Oh, Whipple. Please don't squeeze the Charmin. New squeezably soft Charmin bathroom tissue from Procter & Gamble. Take it home and squeeze it. Well, I mean, you know, I mean, all, all joking aside, man, um, shit is hella fucked up out there. Um, I, I'm not even sure if we were being all that fucking funny there at the beginning. I mean, we were trying to lighten it up a little bit. The situation is fucking bleak, man. Um, you know, by far the worst leader in the history of fucking the known universe is fucking Donald Trump. Uh, you know, I mean, dude, it's practically the end of the goddamn world. I'm not kidding, man. I mean, you know, I've only experienced only the minorest of, you know, I've just created a new word, the, mi the most minor inconveniences. And I'm already ready to start peeling caps and backhanding bitches on the fucking street. It's absolute lunacy outside. Um, so, you know, that'll let me tell everybody a story about what happened. So, you know, I actually just, everything was fine here in Vegas up until about 72 hours ago. And, um, I actually went over to, uh, Trader Joe's, which is like the only place that I shop and I haven't been panic by panic buying anything. Um, you know, we've got plenty of toilet paper at the house. We were fine. You know, we were good to go on that. But, uh, I went over to, um, Trader Joe's and there's a line with like 15 or 20 people and, you know, they're spraying hand sanitizer and they're limiting how many people they will let into the store. So this is like my first experience with holy shit. I can't just walk into a place and get whatever I want. And, um, you know, the guy was like, you know, do you want some hand sanitizer? It only took me about five minutes to get into the store. It was not a huge inconvenience. But uh, then I go across the street to the dispensary and uh, I'm there to get medication. And uh, they're like, we're not going to let anybody in the store. And, you know, we have a new protocol. If you want to order like, you know, medication, you know, medical marijuana is what I'm talking about here. They go, you have to get online and place your order. And the guy's trying to tell me all of this. And I mean, dude, I just cut straight to the chase. I go, look, I'm going to give a fuck what you got to do. I'm not getting online. I'm not ordering shit. I'm all, my name is Rory Dam. I'm all, look me up. I spend $1,500 a month in this fucking place. I'm all, go and get the manager and they're going to sell me meds right here, right now. I'm not doing any of this shit. There's literally nobody in the line. I kid you not. There are seven guys standing out in front of the place. Two security guys. We're all just hanging out, talking to each other. Nothing's different, right? I'm not saying that there's not a problem, but I mean, the overreaction is my point here. So, you know, a guy comes out and he's like, oh, yes, sir. You know, they look me up. And so, of course, dude, they, they literally do it all for me. And they walk me in the door and they sell me my meds and I'm out the door but at that point, I started losing my shit. I'm like, I can't go out in public because I'm not the kind of guy that jumps through hoops very well. Bottom line, I mean, plain and simple. So, you know, then we flash 48 hours later. I go back to the same Trader Joe's. That was this morning, the, the morning that we're filming this show. And, um, you know, so I get there and I get there at like 830 in the morning and, um, there's like 10 people in line. So I'm thinking no big deal. 
And, uh, you know, so I'm waiting. Dude, by the time nine o'clock rolls around, I shit you not, there's like a hundred people in this line. It's like a block, two blocks long. And I'm like sitting there and I'm in the car and I'm like, you know, and I kind of know the manager guy of, uh, of the Trader Joe's because I shop there every week. And, you know, so I walk up to the guy and I mean, at first I'm just going to like walk right through the door and tell him, fuck you, I'm going to go buy shit and go fuck yourself. But I decide to take a different route and I walk up to the guy at the door and I say, hey man, I'm all like, I have a quick question for you. I'm all, um, is this a store policy that you've got everybody lined up out front like this and that you're only letting a few people in the store? Is this a state mandated thing where you're only allowed to let them let, you know, a few people in at a time? Which one is it? Because at other stores, they're not implicating anything like this. So, you know, so the guy looks at me and he's all, I'm not going to argue with you. He's all like, I'm not going to let you in the store today. And so, dude, at this point, I lose my fucking shit, dude. Like, so I pretty much tell the guy, I'm all, really? I'm all, so, but if I go stand in this line, you're going to let me in the store, right? And he says, yeah. I go, well, let me explain something to you. I go, limiting how many people you let into the store so that we can't be close to each other is completely defeated by the fact that you have all these fucking sheeple out here in this line right now. I'm all, do you even understand how this virus spreads? Have you done any research on this whatsoever? Who made this call? Was it you? Was it corporate? Who was it? He's basically like, you know, you're not welcome at this store anymore. And I go, well, you know what? Fuck you. I'm not shopping at this store anymore, asshole. So fuck you. And I get in the car and I leave. And I, you know, dude, I immediately call the store on the phone. Like the minute I get in the car, I call another manager on the phone. And I ask them, I make them go through the whole thing. I explain to them the idiocy of the fact that you have a hundred people standing huddled together on the sidewalk so that you can limit how many people are going to be together in the store so they can again wait in another small line to pay for their groceries. I explain to them the lunacy of the entire thing, that if they're going to risk anything, they might as well just let people risk it all because that's what we're all doing by coming out and just acting like nothing's wrong. You know, I mean, I'm not saying it's right or wrong. I'm not making a judgment call on what I'm doing here. I mean, I, you know, I firmly believe that, you know, I haven't panic bought anything. You know, it's, I just, it's a personal accountability issue, though, for the store. These motherfuckers are outside on the street coughing on each other, okay? Yeah. But when they're in the store coughing on each other, they're coughing on each other inside their store. Right. And either way, you know, I mean, it's just, it's absolute. that's out of control. But, you know, anyway, so I called the guy. I make him go through the whole thing. I explained to him. At the end of the conversation, after being calm, cool, and collect, explaining to him, everything that he needed to hear, and I don't think that he was hearing it any more than the guy at the door was, but I proceeded to tell him, well, here's the deal. You know, I have a whole bunch of people and, you know, called the, you know, basically we're going to like make sure that you hear about this and you can suck my dick. And I hang up on him and that's the end of that. But I drive over to the other Trader Joe's across town. So I go there and uh, the line there is only like 15, 25 people deep max. Nowhere near like the other store. So I immediately walk to the back door of the store, open it up the exit door where they do the load in for the stock, walk in through the stock room, go right in through the back door, go into the store, buy everything that I need and exit that store within five minutes. So I didn't wait in the goddamn line. I got everything that I needed. As soon as I was done purchasing that, I noticed that in that store, they had told me on the phone there were 40 people allowed in the store at a time. At this other store, there couldn't have been 10 people in that store. So the guy tells me corporate made the policy. He's not wanting to take responsibility for it, etc. But basically, dude, I tell the chick at the door, I go, hey, hon, you're doing a great job. I'm all, I just walked in the back door and bought everything I needed in five minutes and left. And there's 25 people that were ahead of me. But I didn't wait in that line. Everything you're doing here is pointless. And I proceed to explain to her everything that I explained to the other two fucking idiot managers on the phone and to their face. But the bottom line is that, you know, you can't fix idiots, man but that's what's up. I mean, you know, I don't, I can't really get into it right here right now, but I mean, I have people 
within our group, the Villain Cult, and the Villain Cult is a very real group. We have a lot of people all over the country. Um, you're going to hear a lot of things on this show that you've never heard before. But, uh, you know, I mean, I have people that, you know, have friends whose families work in the military, work for the state of uh, Colorado in the government offices, okay? I mean, so I'm getting... You know, what, you have to take everything with a grain of salt. I'm not saying every single bit of this information that I hear comes to pass, but I will say this, that most of the information that these people have passed along to me thus far has come to pass in the time frame that they said it would. And bottom line, I was sent some messages this week saying that on Monday, they were talking about like serious, you know, quarantine, martial law level quarantine with you know, deploying the National Guard. Um, you know, I mean, they can't really deny people going out and getting food, but I mean, you know, th you know these people are suggesting that I have, you know, a month of food in my house and they're going to tell everybody that it's only a week, but it's really going to be a month. And, you know, all these messages get convoluted, but the seriousness of the issue is this, that I personally think, and I don't know what you guys think, I'll, I'll let up here in a second. I've rambled for quite some time, but in about one week to 10 days, about the first of the month, when you watch this, mark my words, as soon as people start to look around and they see that those thousand dollar checks are not in their hand and that they may or may not be coming, when they see that they can't feed their kids, that's when the real problem is going to start. When landlords start talking about evictions, People can't pay rent because they're not working. And, you know, they're doing it on a state by state level. Some places you can rent, uh, you know, they're not going to have any evictions on rentals and mortgages. But here's the thing. If you're just acquiring debt, when they do let their foot up off of your net, if they ever do, then you're going to be sitting on a mountain of debt and you already didn't have the money to pay said debt. So what they're going to do is then say, well, now there's no more pandemic to protect you and evict everyone. So what state will the world be in at that point? I personally am not sure if there's going to, if there's going to be like, you know, if there's not going to be civil unrest come the fourth to fifth of next month, that's my guess. So what do you guys think? It's your turn, man. What do you guys think? So my girlfriend's family has a nicer house than hers. So I said, hey, let's go ride this out at your parents' house. There so you go. we go to this small town and, you know, things are fucking weird here. There's no toilet paper, whatever the fuck. But the rest of the shit stocked, man. I mean, all the savages came in the first day and bought up, like, you know, all the frozen pizzas and whatnot, you know, and bread. But anything else on the shelf has been fair game. Yesterday, I ran into my first fucking uh, coronavirus-related problem when I went to get some pinto beans, and they didn't have them, and I lost my fucking mind. Everything else has been fine up until this one point, but this one can of beans set me off the fucking rails. And then I left the store, and I was fine. So I don't know why everybody else is freaking the fuck out, man. Everything is fine. Everything's going to be fine, because it what sort of fucking what world is go to? You know what I mean? I've noticed that, and the per funny thing is, the first first thing I saw on TV was was uh, Trader Joe's, and the lines going out at Trader Joe's. They're having an issue with that motherfucking place, man. Right. But I mean, you know, you shop around, you, you shop, you know, you go to these little little mart, they go to a little Mexican mart, you know. No like, shortage little... of food, okay. That's not what I'm talking about here, okay. So no, I know, but that's what everybody's losing their fucking minds over right now. That's their biggest fear, man. They're worried yeah. about shit that isn't happening, the shit that's going on behind the scenes. That's what we're fucking worried about. Now, this right here is a test run, man. Like, we're all going to be okay after this one. But the next one, that's when they're going to fucking put their foot on their neck because they know exactly how much pressure they can put on us, man. Yeah. I mean, I, you know, I have a lot of deep-seated beliefs about the government. And um, I truly believe that this is the last and only attempt. This is the power play move. They've taken the opportunity of the virus, okay? Um, and they're going to use that to fulfill the rest of the plan, okay? Like, I mean, with this, with everybody 
basically staying in their home, afraid of an invisible uh, enemy. They can drain the economy down to zero. And then at that point, the only people that will have employment are people that work for the government or for the machine in one capacity or another. In fact, most of the people that I know right now that still have money coming in work for a corporation that is essentially a subsidized and or owned and controlled, if you will, by the government. I mean, you, you know, it's up to everyone to go out and do their own research. But, uh, you know, we definitely have a situation where, you know, I just don't see any way for them to. They're pushing everybody further in one direction. That's that's basically the best way. And, we, and everyone's essentially moving in that direction, man. I'm not sure, uh, you know, if there is a breaking point, man. I mean, I kind of lost hope in society a while back when. Trump, you know, really came into play and I, and I started to realize that, um, you know, that Trump is essentially, you know, corruption in plain sight, hiding under the guise of, you know, of nationalism and patriotism and it's spreading through pure stupidity, man. I mean, I don't really think that we can fix what's happening at this point, man. I mean, they're talking about, uh, you know, taking away everybody's civil rights until the end of this. I mean, that would essentially mean that if there was a riot in the street, like I just talked about, that they would be able to just get a, a, a goddamn semi truck if they wanted, go out into the streets with the National Guard or anything. And anyone that comes against them, throw you into a semi truck, take you to a camp. And you will be held without a trial, without rights. And this is a real story. It's on CM. It's on every major news outlet. It's all over Facebook. You know, the, luckily the Dems are, are going to block that shit right now. For now, they are. They're making it look like they're trying to block it. Okay. Well, yeah, that's that's what Trump's shooting for. He wants his full fucking totalitarian uh, dictatorship. This is what he's been yeah. shooting for all along. Well, let yeah. me tell you why it's going to happen. It's the end of the fucking world, and I'm sitting here in fucking pajamas and watching shit that's actually currently at the theater on my TV, man. Everybody's going to be complacent with all of this shit. Everybody's going to let, you know, ride it out, and then it's going to be too fucking late. I'm telling you, they're seeing what they can do, and then next time we're all fucking done, man. I, I got to be honest. You guys know me, man. I mean, I, I gave up before this shit even started happening. So, like, I, I'm taking all this in stride, and I'm enjoying it. I'm, I, yeah, I mean, like, like, like Lockhart just said, said I'm, I'm not sure if you guys are aware of this, but all of the awesome download sites, I'll do my best to get some sort of a list into the – into the comment section. Uh, hey, Lockhart, I'm going to need you to put on the comment section. You can download every new movie. Do not go out and support any, any corporation right now. I mean, we could tell you how to survive practically for free and get every single new movie. Uh, I just watched The Hunt last night, uh, which is a great movie about liberals going out and killing like Trump supporters. Uh, I want to see it. Yeah, it was a great movie, man. So if you guys get a chance to illegally download that and check it out, you should. Um, so aside from fucking, you know, sitting around watching movies, what else are you guys doing to pass the time during the end of the world? Um, uh, chronic masturbation, um, weed, lots of weed. Um, looking for a stockpile of guns. Uh, I, I already got that shit handled, dude. I've, I've, you know, I'm not going to, like, you know. Spread out the world. <laughs> well, something my, my fun that I found. To, see what happens. Something fun I found to do is to get into some of those doomsday prepper groups and just kind of get them riled up. You know, <laughs> ask for doomsday. <laughs> no, listen, uh, ask for doomsday <laughs> tip advice, and you'll have them swarm you, and then all of their ideas, you know, contradict each other, and then you get to watch them fight. But <laughs> you'll get lucky. You'll get lucky, and you'll have one of these fucking guys that's a real Rambo, like, private message you and really try to walk you through the apocalypse. That's where your real entertainment's at for the next couple that's of months, folks. That's like your golden prize when you finally get the nut job that you're your guide through the apocalypse. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, actually, just before this all started, I actually had a cold. 
and I've, I've totally like still got a little bit of a cough and a lot because every symptom is all oh, you've got the virus. Right. So, I mean, every morning when I go out and like get some, I get Gatorade at Walmart every morning. And, uh, cause you know, I, I, I think we might've bought a few bottles at the house here so we didn't have to go every morning. But, uh, but you know, I go to the store in the morning, I'm sniffling and coughing and shit. I'm, I'm just, just laughing, laughing at everybody, dude. dude. I mean, another, another cool thing, thing that you guys <laughs> might not know out there that are watching this. Another thing you guys might not know is that uh, the most of the uh, governments have, I'm sorry, state governments have been telling the police to not respond to any non-emergency calls. So I just wanted you to know that if you go into a place like, uh, you know, Walgreens or a smaller uh, store like that, you can pretty much just fill up boxes and bags. There's already plenty of people doing that all over the country. There's video of it all over YouTube. Uh, all over Facebook. You pretty much can just walk in, take whatever you want and leave because uh, that's not considered a police emergency right now. So um, if you're watching this and you really are in need, um, you know, there was a lyric that I used to sing and the lyric was, if you can't buy it, steal it, don't do without. And it wasn't just a lyric, it's a lifestyle. Um, so I'm 100% going to tell you right now that um, if they've got your foot on, if they've got their foot on your neck and you need whatever you fucking need, go out and get it now while you can. Because if they do suck away our rights, you're pretty much going to get locked up without a trial or anything like that, man. I mean, they're, they're setting shit up for the end of the world, man. Mad Max rules. I'm going to pretty much run around in a pair of underwear without a shirt. I'm going to have my woman on a leash. Uh, we're just going to get in the car with our two cats, fucking hit the road and see how far we can get on a tank of gas and a shitty attitude. I mean, that's pretty much my exit strategy right now. So, um, that's where I'm at with it, man. I'm pretty much uh, custom made for the end of the world. I don't know about you guys, but I'm ready for I'm, it. Uh, I'm hunkered down right here, dude. I'm holding my ground, dude. Uh, you know, I'll be blasting out the fucking window while they're coming at me and shit, dude. Fuck that. Yeah, I'm you ain't gonna last long in an enclosed structure, man. <laughs> you gotta you have to get in the car and fucking hit the road, man. I don't know what to tell you. Have you not watched enough disaster and end of the world films to know what's coming our way? <laughs> <laughs> I'll be the first to go. I'll be yeah, the first to go. Shit was funny sure. six. Shit was funny six months ago when Mike was always wearing gloves and a mask. But who's fucking laughing now, pal? <laughs> <laughs> I wear gloves inside the store every time. I'm wearing gloves. I've been ahead of the curve, man. I, I'm wondering Best how for many of us and to be able to get away with it. I'm wondering how many of our fucking haters are actually watching this right now, waiting for some big message from the villain cult or some some mention of them or whatever. I mean, you got your Doctor Fuck faces. You got your Luigi's. I know this isn't going to mean jack shit to half of you people, but anybody who's in our groups knows who these fucking assholes are. But uh, uh, what, 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 that little uh, dickless freak, Bill Wang, had a fucking drank too many paps the other night. And threw yeah, us out of Bill Wang. Yeah, yeah, Bill Wang is um, yeah. is Doctor Fuckface's boyfriend. Yeah, man, I'm sure they're all watching the show, but uh, I just want to say right now that things are getting serious. Um, you know, the end of the world is coming, and if we've had any beefs or any falling outs, uh, you should probably hide if the end of the world comes, because I'm fucking coming for you. So, so if you're watching this right now, <laughs> I just want you motherfuckers to know that if I have even the slightest head start, every last one of you motherfuckers is going to go. I mean, I have a whole new philosophy. It's called aim for the fucking head. I mean, if you see one of them, aim for the head. Yeah, and you may ask yourself who Vim is. Vim is anyone on the list, man. Just remember, aim for the fucking head, man. I'm, <laughs> I'm Roy Goddamn. He's Mike Lockhart. He's Eric Lawton. And this is the end of the fucking world and the end of the fucking show. Everybody check back with us. We're probably going to have a lot more time to kill. We're going to try to cap these fucking episodes off at around a half hour. Um, if any of you people out there are bothering to watch it, we will be back. We are the Villain Cult Podcast, and fuck you all. <laughs> this is a song called The, the Misanthrope. A hack act is choking on the scenery. Mere grist to feed the machinery. 
fairy tales and useless fables Prayers at the children's table It ends with us dead To the family All hail the cult of misanthropy The church and then the steeple Bring out the weak and feeble This world that turns on the thought of you Dad Stories like the gory tea Tales. So keep your finger on the mean scale Sick of fans and gorgeous users Pay the way for tomorrow's losers They're wanting you dead This says you're welcome to the family God damn the cult of his vanity The church and then the steeple Bring out the weak and feeble This world that turns on the thought of you Dad I chloroform the evil There's nothing worse than people This world that turns on the thought of you Darn